On the desk here, we have the habit pedal from Chase Bliss. In this video, I want to go over the basic functionality. I'm not going to go through every single feature of the pedal, but I kind of want to just give a real quick overview of it and how it operates so you can kind of understand it. I want to talk about who this pedal might be for. I want to talk about pros and cons of the pedal. And I want to give some examples of different types of sounds going through the pedal. I just want to pass a handful of things through it and adjust the knobs and kind of play around so you get an example of kind of some of the stuff that it can do. At its core, the Habit is a delay pedal. It's a delay pedal, but it also has a memory built in, and that's a three minute memory. And that three minute memory is always recording from the input. And basically you can access that three minute memory in a variety of ways. You do that with the spread and scan knobs based on the configuration of the pedal via dip switches in the back and settings on the front. The Habit, in addition to having the basically standard delay features via the top row here, it has the modify knob and these switches here, which sort of act like effects in a way that are sort of applied to the delay. And basically they affect how the delay operates. So you sort of select your A off and then B switch, and then you select one, two, and three. And that's kind of how you uh, interact with the modifies effects. I'm calling them effects because that's kind of what they feel like, but it's basically just how it modifies the delay. So again, basic delay on the top, modify the delay here, and then access the memory buffer through these knobs here. And then there's a bunch of dip switches that, depending on how they're set, it does different things for all of those different features of the pedal. <laughs> In addition to standard delay, memory buffer access, delay modulation, it does have two presets which can be accessed through this switch. You've got preset one on the left, preset two on the right, and then the center is what you see is what you get. It also has expression and CV control, and it has a tap MIDI control. You do have tap tempo with the switch here on the left, and you do have bypass on the right, fairly standard. And if all of that isn't enough, you've got secondary features on both of the buttons. By clicking and holding the tap hold button, you get a momentary scan, and it's just like cranking the scan all the way to the top. The pedal will grab pieces of audio uh, from the memory buffer. And then the other feature is when you click and hold the bypass, you get a loop sustain. So it grabs the current piece of audio and just loops it indefinitely, and you can jam over the top of that. Let's talk Habit's memory. Habit has a three minute long memory that is always recording the input and it can be accessed in a variety of ways. So the way in which to conceptualize the memory playback delay combo that the Habit has is the delay only applies to the memory playback. Now, we can play back the memory in a variety of ways, but basically it's through the scan and spread knobs. I have scan set up in the manual configuration via the dip switch on the back, and this is basically the easiest way to think about it. Otherwise it's firing uh, randomly based on the amount that you set. So I like manual mode because it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna set the scan to about 3.5 seconds ago, and I have a really long delay time, and this is so you don't hear it. It's 60 seconds later. I'm gonna play a note, and about three and a half seconds later, you hear the firing of the first memory. Now, because spread is set down to none, we don't get a secondary firing. But if I bring this up, you'll hear it uh, firing right after this one, about uh, two or three seconds. So, In that example, it's really straightforward, and again, the delay is set really long so that you don't hear the delay. I can shorten it so that you can hear the delay operating on these, and you won't hear it on the initial note, but then you'll hear it on the scan spread playback. That's a really clear and concise way to sort of see the scan spread delay in action. Things get a little bit more complicated and a little bit more interesting when we incorporate the modifiers. Let's turn those on 
and I've set the secondary memory playback to none. So we'll just get one ping from scan, and then you'll hear the delay. The delay has a bit of a pitch shift feature uh, where it plays back octaves and fifths, so you'll clearly hear the delay behaving differently than it did before. And scan kicks in, and you have the strange sort of pitch shifted delay. Pretty cool. Uh, let's increase the repeat so you can really hear that. So the delay has been pitched down, so the playbacks are like a fifth lower than the initial note, which is really cool. But again, notice that the initial input has no delay on it. Pretty interesting. So we can set the delay time to longer. So the delay repeats will be an octave lower or a fifth lower and repeating at a much slower rate. Scan. So that's pretty interesting, in my opinion. Let's incorporate some spread. Now this is going to, like before, fire after the initial ping from scan. Scan. With delay. And then you hear the spread. So again, you can see how complex this can become very quickly. I really like to think that this is like an exponential growth audio algorithm. It's sort of constantly building on top of itself and doing things to that initial audio, and it just changes over time. It's very procedural. I really dig that about this pedal. <laughs> Things get even crazier when we incorporate the in-out feed switch's other functionality, currently set to out, so you just have straightforward delay on top of the memory playback. In basically feeds the delay back in on itself, so you get some crazy effects, especially when you've got the pitch shifting or some of the filtering. It's feeding it back in on itself and exponentially growing what was already fairly complex. So let's show that right now. Let's get back over to our A1, our pitch shifter, and let me show you what it originally sounds like without the in-out feed. And scan. That was the spread. So you heard the two firings, you heard the delay on top of it, the little chirpy pitch shifted delay. Now let's do in and you'll hear the delay feeding in on itself. You hear that rising in pitch because the pitch is being modified and then modified again. And then subsequently feed basically feeds all of that back into the input and sort of then runs everything again. We've got an initial ping, then we've got the scan spread with all the stuff. And then it does it again. I'm clearing the memory buffer regularly. If we were jamming consistently over the top of this and we had filled up the entire three minute buffer, you can scan through and find different moments that are working and then find them again. This could be playing a whole song and we could be finding stuff and then you've got a secondary ping of the memory with delay and pitch shifting on top and it can get absolutely nuts. And because we can use the collector dip switch in the back where we never lose anything off of the memory, basically it's just indefinitely piling more and more information and doing weird stuff with what's on the memory endlessly. The potential here for bonkers is huge. Super cool. So I hope that illustrated the memory and the delay and how they kind of work together. It's a little hard to explain, but hopefully that kind of gave you a little bit of a, a starting point. Thank you.
I want to talk about the in-out feed switch, this switch right here. The in-out feed switch, in my opinion, is really at the heart of what makes the Habit a unique device. The manual says the following. In-out feed changes the internal routing of the Habit, which can have dramatic effect. You can switch between this at any time. Out, or the center position, results in a consistent effect from modify. Each echo will sound the same. In, to the left, results in an accumulating effect from modify. With each echo, the active modifier is applied again and again. And lastly, feed, to the right, habit's output is routed back into the input, so everything you hear is recorded to the memory. You'll notice the repeats knob behaves differently when feed is on. Feed gets pretty interesting. That's an understatement. Even the Chase Bliss Habit Manual doesn't really do a deep dive into explaining what the feed function does. To quote the manual, feed brings everything together. It's the most habit. It's not always predictable. It almost doesn't make sense, but it works somehow. We'll leave it at that for feed. It's your mystery to explore. This to me says a lot about how complex the switch is and how difficult it is to articulate how to conceptualize what this pedal is capable of. Because the delay can be 60 seconds long and the internal memory is three minutes long, it becomes quite difficult to show how strange and otherworldly this pedal can get after playing it for even 10 minutes. But just because it's difficult doesn't mean I'm not gonna try. It's probably way out of the scope of this video to go through every single dip switch and their functionality, but I'd be remiss in my duties if I didn't at least talk about collect. Collect is probably one of the more interesting dip switch features because it has a dramatic effect on how the habit operates. Normally, audio comes in through the input and then is printed onto the three minute memory buffer. At the end of that three minutes, it leaves habit. With collect turned on, habit never deletes the memory from its memory buffer. So it's basically just continuously looping and we're continuously adding material on. Now I like to think about Habit as kind of an audio collage creator. When we make a collage, we take already existing material and we cut it up and we rearrange it and form a completely new composition. Much like that example, Habit does that with audio. Habit has the ability to take already existing audio information and then rearrange it into a completely new composition. The great thing about Habit is it can then do that again with the already existing composition and create a completely new one. And then it can do it again. It's like audio collage inception. To try to illustrate the complexity of the Habit over time, I have the following example. I have set up the Habit pedal with a few settings including the collect dip switch on and the in out feed switch set to feed. This will let the Habit evolve over time and I've seeded the Habit with one plucked note from guitar. The incoming note is the only sound the Habit received and I didn't even play with the knobs. I just let the Habit build the composition procedurally. So let's check it out. Is this pedal for? I think this pedal is for anyone looking for more experimental delay. 
I think this pedal is for anyone interested in long form compositional looping. It's not anything like a traditional looper, but because of the three minute memory, you can really create some in the moment improvisational arrangements. Think reel to reel, Robert Fripp, Frippertronic stuff, Eno stuff, anything ambient, anything that builds over time. I think anyone into live performative music, this thing needs to be played to be fully enjoyed. You have to twist knobs, you have to change switches and flip over to the different settings. With the Chase Bliss Habit, the real magic happens long after the original musical idea has been put down. And with the feedback and or collector, you can really build up intriguing collages of sound. I think anyone into modular is going to really enjoy this pedal to set up like a pedal effects chain and use CV control over it. I think anyone with a good MIDI setup or wants to do like live MIDI controlling, uh, the fact that you can control all these knobs with MIDI is fantastic. And I think anyone, guitarist, bassist, I think drums could be fine with it as well, who is interested in some type of just a little bit wackier delay style effect or sort of looping looping effect. So I really think this pedal is for just about anyone. Uh, anyone looking to get creative, it's an inspiration tool. It really is. Whatever you put in, it gives you totally new stuff based on that original idea. It's super awesome. Everyone can find some value in this pedal. Let's dive into some pros and cons. It seems to be able to handle anything you throw at it. Uh, it's very synth friendly, which I really like. Uh, it's not just a guitar pedal. It's very experimental. It's very ambient. It's very fun. It's very explorative. The build construction is immaculate. Um, all of the knobs are nice and firm. They have a little bit of resistance uh, on the glide, but they're not too stiff. They're not too loose. You couldn't bump it with your foot or something. The switches are nice. It's got the no click switches which i really like it's solid it just it's firm it feels like it's well made small package i don't think this gets talked about enough uh with pedals but some pedals are unnecessarily large everything's fairly accessible right here most of the main functions that you need are right on the front you can access everything you're not bumping anything it's small normal pedal sized but it's packs a punch another pro is expression cv control as well as midi control it does have the ability to do midi so you could hook this up to your daw you could hook it up to a dig attack or or any other midi device and control some of the features you've got an expression slash cv control so you can hook this up to a modular you can hook it up to an expression pedal and i definitely had a lot of fun doing cv with the euro rack so i definitely think that's a huge plus i'm super happy they put all of that in. I also like that the presets are there, so you can access some presets, you can set some things up that really work for you, but you don't have like, you know, 40 that are in some sort of sub menu or something like that. It's just two, preset one, no preset, preset two. Super easy. Cons. Um, cost is probably one of the biggest cons. I think that $400 plus tax starts getting into difficult uh, territory for a lot of people. Um, not everyone has a spare $400 for a delay pedal lying around. I'm always thinking about accessibility and like, could some kid get a hold of this pedal and start their experimental music career with it? I mean, they would have to mow a lot of lawns to sort of get there. However, boutique pedals are really cool these days, and I think it's great that there's a lot of companies doing this kind of a thing, and the money helps them keep doing more experimental things that just didn't exist before, and all of that R&D is, is in this box. So I, I think it's worth the $400 for sure. I'm just always thinking about accessibility for people who might not be able to afford something like this, and I think $400 is a steep price point. Probably my biggest con of the whole package is that it's mono. I, I wish it was stereo because I do love a good stereo image, but it doesn't take away from the playability. It doesn't take away from the fun that I had uh, while using the pedal. Putting some stereo delay, some stereo chorus, some stereo reverb post habit 
I think is a must and it really helps bring out all of the little nuances that that come from this pedal. Another con is the dip switches on the back. Personally, for me, the way I use the pedal is usually on a desk with a modular or whatnot. So I'd really love it if the dip switches were in the front so that I could see them and access them or I found that I had to kind of put the pedal up on end to sort of be able to do stuff and you really do need a little tool to push them. You can't do it with your fingers. So I could see that live being very difficult. That's probably the one playability downside of the whole pedal. I'm glad they're there. Uh, just wish they were on the front. Speaking of CV, they say that you probably shouldn't put anything over five volts or it may damage the internal circuitry. I wish they would protect against that. CV from a Euro rack can be all over the place. It would be really nice to not have to worry about that. Like, even if it didn't do anything past 5 volts, it would still protect against it. The tap MIDI, to do the MIDI control, you need their MIDI box, which is like $60 or $70, to be able to control it. I love that there's MIDI functionality. I don't love that you got to buy this expensive box to convert the signal. I would love to just be able to go straight into it with one of these you know dongles or whatever and i haven't tried that but they said on the website you need the box so i haven't done that so anyway i think that's kind of a downside you add the midi functionality but now i need to buy more stuff to be able to do it the pros on this thing so vastly outweigh any of the cons So that is The Habit from Chase Bliss. Uh, it's a magical delay pedal, totally worth the investment if you've got that $400 lying around. It's such a fun pedal, it's so expressive, it's so explorative. You really can go down paths and avenues that you just didn't know were available with a delay pedal. It's an inspiration machine. It really just takes you somewhere and you just can see where it goes. And with that collector feature and you can just keep stacking stuff on top of it, you just can build something right in this box alone, which I think is super special. And then you could have uh, more effects after it or sample this stuff or plug in a totally different instrument and now jam on top of that. I, there's just so many things you could do with this pedal and so many places you could take it and so many places it could take you. And I think that's really the heart of it. It takes you places. You're always surprised by the results, which I found to be just tons of fun. I love this pedal. I can't say enough good things about it. I have not put this thing down. I keep playing it and playing it and playing it. Everything I put into it is fantastic. So it's definitely worth it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you liked this video, give the video a like. If you have a way to use this pedal that maybe I didn't cover or a sound design possibility that uh, maybe we haven't explored here, leave it down in the comments. I'd love to know what you thought of the pedal and what your thoughts are. Leave them down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for the encouragement on previous videos. It really does just kind of fuel uh, and gives me energy to kind of keep producing videos. So thank you so much for the people who have commented or just give me constructive criticism or feedback. I really appreciate it. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.